We don't know where the bombs which destroyed Gaza's Al-Shifa hospital were made, but we do know that the US is by far Israel's biggest supplier of weapons. In the five years to 2023, 69% of major arms imported to Israel came from the US, with Germany making up 30% and Italy 1%. As for the UK, there have been no major arms sales picked up by the database recently. The UK government claims that UK source supplies represent just 0.02% of Israel's military imports, although the time frame wasn't given. In the face of such carnage, military support for Israel is becoming an increasingly difficult policy for the Biden administration to defend. The weapons, the systems that Israel has sought to acquire go to self-defense. It's also about the threats posed to Israel by Hezbollah, by Iran, by various other actors in the region, uh, each one of which has vowed one way or another to try to destroy Israel. Critics of Israel's campaign in Gaza say the Biden administration should be using any available leverage to make Israel change its approach. If the United States were to condition aid, it wouldn't necessarily deprive Israel of weapons that it's in its current stockpile, but it would send a very clear signal that the United States is not willing to be a facilitator of its current military strategy. There's little sign of that happening so far. Since the October 7th attacks, the US has rushed two new emergency shipments of weapons to Israel, totaling more than $250 million, bypassing Congress. But Biden does need Congress for his plan to sell $18 billion worth of F-15 fighter jets to Israel, a plan he's determined to pursue despite criticism from within his own party. It's already affecting him at the polls. 40,000 Democrats in the swing state of Wisconsin voted uninstructed in Tuesday's primary rather than for the incumbent president. A protest vote in a state that Joe Biden won by just 20,000 votes in 2020 and will need to win again this year if he's to defeat Donald Trump.